Hey, what do you say my fellow weekend warriors? Today we are smoking this massive 20 pound beef shoulder clod. And you might be asking yourself, what the heck is a shoulder clod? It looks like a giant brisket, but believe me, it is not. This is actually a subprimal cut. It's made up of five different muscles three of which are the top blade, the shoulder center, and the shoulder tender. The rest of it they typically grind up for burgers, but there's some cuts in here that you would be familiar with. Uh, they get the London broils from here, the petite tender, your chuck roasts, uh, flat irons, chuck steaks. So all of that comes from this guy. We're gonna smoke it today like a brisket, uh, but not quite, and we'll get into some of the nuances here in a minute. But first, I'm gonna get this out of the packaging and we're gonna clean it up a little bit. And check that out, it's pretty wild, right? You can see these seams here. This is where the butcher would run his knife through and get those different cuts, especially the three big muscles. And we could do that today, but that wouldn't be a whole lot of fun to smoke. I wanna smoke this as a whole thing. You don't see too many videos of it on YouTube. Uh, you know who's got the most would be Ballistic Barbecue. Buddy of mine, Greg, over there. He's been doing these for years. Uh, they're just not common, you're not gonna find them in your grocery store. Uh, you're gonna have to ask your butcher if they have them, and it might be a special order, but I figured this would be a lot of fun. So what I'm gonna do is trim the silver skin away, very similar to a brisket. This is my top side, and I'll show you the underside, which is where the fat cap is. We'll trim a little bit of that too. But right now I'm getting the silver skin off uh, so we can get a lot of good rub on here. And this cut also has a ton of connective tissue, which makes it really tough. And we have to cook it slow to break that down. But it also doesn't have as much fat as a brisket. So we're not gonna cook it to the same temperature and feel as we would a brisket. So, you see silver skin I'm cleaning up. I'll just run my sharp knife through, just right under that layer. Try not to get too much meat, but with 20 pounds here, I'm not worried about hacking it up a little bit. Just want to get it nice and clean. All right, so I'm going to do this and we'll come back. All right, so that's the level of trim I've done on this top side. I've probably taken a good pound of uh, flesh and fat and connective tissue and all that. Now we're gonna flip this over to our fat cap side and clean this guy up. There is, at certain points, I would say, right through here, some really hard fat, probably about an inch thick. I'm gonna take off about a half inch over here clean up a little over here but just like a brisket I want to leave a nice fat layer so that the fat acts as a barrier against the heat and that's looking pretty good I mean I kind of did a butcher job here no pun intended but there's so much of that real hard I mean thick silver skin that I just decided to get rid of it there's still some here a little bit of nice fat here we'll just deal with it see how it turns out all right now I'm going to marinate this in a dry rub here overnight. This is called Cookies Flavor Enhancer. It's all natural. It has uh, a meat tenderizer in it, along with what else we got? Salt, pepper, garlic, chili powder, a little bit of sugar, red pepper, good stuff. I've used this on just about everything. Um, but what we're gonna do is let this kind of melt into the meat overnight in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna go with a very light coating because tomorrow, uh, before I put this in the smoker, I'm gonna hit it up with a little bit of extra black pepper. I'm gonna kind of go for the same kind of bark and look as a brisket, even though this is a completely different cut of beef. So that's good for that side. All right. Wash my hands so I could grab this again without making it all nasty. So, same thing, just gonna coat this here lightly. And then, uh, like I said, we'll get it in the refrigerator overnight. And I will see you guys tomorrow, I can't wait. Just another experiment here in the driveway. Hope it turns out good, I'm sure it will though. 
We'll see you tomorrow. All right, it's been about 12 hours. This sat overnight in the refrigerator. I'm smoking this today in my vertical pellet smoker. I'm using hickory wood pellets. They're 100% hickory from Kingsford. That's the brand. And we're smoking at 225 degrees Fahrenheit today. We're gonna go nice and slow, get as much smoke flavor as we can. And we're just gonna let it smoke until it's really tender. That might be 12 hours, it might be 20 hours. I don't know, because I haven't done this before. Uh, but let's check out this meat and see how this looks after being overnight. Ooh, all right. That looks awesome. So that tenderizer really did a nice job. I can see it got down into the fat and all these crevices. Kind of changed the surface of the meat a little bit. There's some juice pooling at the bottom, but not too much. And so all I'm gonna do now is dust this with some black pepper. I think it tastes really good on smoked beef. So just a light dusting though. And this will complement the rub we put on yesterday. There we go. I'm not gonna do any to the bottom, pretty much because I'm out of black pepper. No big deal though. I'm gonna get this out and into the smoker. Let's do it. And I'll get this door open real quick, just kind of explain. I've got a full pan of water down underneath. I'm cooking at about the center rack right here. I like to go right about this latch position. And just in case you missed it, I'm smoking at 225 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm using hickory blend pellets from Kingsford. So with that, let me get this beast in there. Going with that fat side down. And I've just barely got enough room in there. This is the five series smoker. So your four series, three series, this is gonna be a little bit too big. If you are using a smaller smoker, I've got the brick trick where you wrap a brick in foil, you put it underneath and it'll kind of drape over and shorten the distance. As it cooks, this thing will shrink. So after about a couple hours, you can take that brick out and you should be good to go. But let me get this door closed. All right, and that's it. We're just gonna let it smoke until it's super tender. I'm not quite sure what temperature that's gonna be. It doesn't really matter, but probably somewhere in the ballpark of 190 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna come out about every two and a half hours or so. That's how long that water pan lasts before it dries out, about two and a half hours. I'll come out to refill the water pan, and then if I need to spritz or do anything like that, I'll do it, and I'll show you guys every step along the way. I can't wait. And it's been about three hours now. Let's get this door open and get our first look, see what's going on. Woo, look at that smoke. Man, that's looking good. So all that rub and pepper that I put on has completely dried out. It's got a nice crust on there. I don't think I'm gonna spritz at this point. I'm gonna let that crust really build up. I think what'll start to happen is this meat will start to sweat eventually and kind of baste itself. So I'm just gonna let this go. I'm gonna close the door and I'll probably come back one more time right before I go to bed. It's uh, 5 p.m. now, my time. So whenever that happens, I'll come back, turn the light on, we'll see how it looks and then we'll go from there. All right, weekend warriors. It's been about eight hours since I put this in. So 10 o'clock my time. I'm getting ready to go to bed, so we're gonna check on this one last time before my head hits the pillow. Let's get this door open. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I just put a temperature probe in now. Uh, the reason I wait, I'm just trying to save battery on my wireless temperature probe, so you don't need to put it in right off the bat. Uh, but right now, we're at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not gonna wrap this at all. We're just gonna let it go. And what's gonna happen, as you see here, it's starting to sweat. And that's gonna create that real nice, dark, kind of licorice, soft bark as this thing sweats through the night. And I'm gonna let it go to about 190, so I'm gonna be monitoring it overnight. I expect this to get done around seven or eight o'clock in the morning, and then I'm gonna let it rest. I'll wrap it up and rest it in a, in a dry cooler, and then I'll slice it up then. But for now, I'm gonna get this door closed. I don't want all this smoke to go out, the temperature to drop too much. 
So I'll come back in the morning when this thing is at about 190 degrees, whatever time that ends up being. All right, Warriors, it's 10 a.m., so we're talking 20 hours total so far. The internal temperature at the thickest point is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I think I'm gonna call it quits here, let it rest for a couple hours. Why don't you check out this smoked meat situation we got going on here. Look at that. That is a beautiful thing. Really, really nice crust on here. And it's super soft. If I just push in it, it feels like jello. So what I'm gonna do is shut this down. I'm gonna wrap it in butcher paper, put it in a dry cooler for about two hours to rest. I gotta run to the grocery store, grab a couple things. When I get back, we're gonna slice into this and see how it tastes. From the outside, it looks awesome. I can't wait. Hey, we did it. This took three total days. Uh, just to kind of recap what we did in case you skipped over it. Uh, to start, I seasoned this with some meat tenderizer, let it sit in the refrigerator for about 12 hours. Then I put it in a smoker at 225 degrees Fahrenheit and I smoked it for just a little bit over 20 hours. I didn't spritz it, I didn't mop it. I didn't wrap it to get it through the stall, and that stall lasted a long time. It sat at about 160 for about five hours overnight before it broke through. And hey, now we're ready to cut this up. Look at this beautiful cut of meat. It rested in a dry cooler for two hours. It's still hot. When I opened that cooler, a bunch of steam came out, uh, but I gotta get this cut up. Real nice dark bark. This is probably the darkest I've ever gotten it. A lot of that has to do with not wrapping it. But hey, let's get into this thing. Over here on this corner, this is just gonna be shredded beef for sandwiches. You can see how tender this is. I mean, super, super tender. If you just wanna get a look there, look at that, guys. I mean, that is absolutely fall apart tender. The whole thing is not this tender. Just this end, I think, will be. At least when I watch uh, Greg's videos, this is what he uses for pulled beef. That's what I'm gonna do too. So just like that, we got this giant pile of pulled beef. And now this section here, we'll go for some brisket slices going across the grain, I, I hope. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh yeah, beautiful smoke ring. Awesome smoke ring, pulls apart, no problem. All right, I've got it all cut up. Here's how I like to serve it. Saltine crackers, jalapenos, sweet pickles, dill pickles, avocado, tomato slices, white onion, thick cut, big pile of meat, some white bread, no sauce, and go to town. Put it on a butcher paper if you have it, no dishes to wash. None of these sides I had to cook, just the beef. And these bees are gonna try and ruin my day, but I'm not gonna let them. I'm gonna get a piece of beef here. Give it a try, see how we did. All right, here we go. Oh my God. Put this on a list of must tries. That crust, it's real crusty, peppery, good flavor. The meat is super tender and beefy. You're gonna love this. Hey, if you guys like what we're doing over here, hit that subscribe button right there and definitely check out one of those two videos right there and I'll see you over there.